I wanna build a crazy deck. A deck focused at madness. A control deck that is using madness cards. A deck that is drawing a really high amount of cards as well, probably discarding a lot of cards and using the graveyard as it were my hand. And the best commander in the entire game to do this is Gollus, Tireless Pilgrim. I guess that the name of this deck that I'm gonna be showcasing for you could be called something like Five Color Anje or Gollus Madness. Now Anje is definitely capable of putting together a really good madness deck with red and black with her at the helm, but Gollus has something really good to offer madness strategies. When Gollus, the tireless pilgrim, enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a land card. Put that card onto the battlefield tapped, and the land that I'm thinking of is Bazaar of Baghdad. Bazaar of Baghdad doesn't tap for mana whatsoever, instead you can tap it to draw two cards, but then you have to discard three cards. You're actually going down in hand size. But if our entire deck is filled with various madness cards or cards that wanna end up inside your graveyard, then you could basically transform a sort of the bag that into tap, draw two cards. And that's quite good. You could actually say that the real commanders for the deck that I'm putting together are Anje and Bazaar of Baghdad. And the reason why we're using Golos as the commander is because he will gain access to all five color identities. And that is actually gonna help Anje a little bit. We're gonna get access to more madness cards because they are madness cards in other colors, but also better madness cards. We're gonna talk about that in a later part of the video. But Golos is basically or you could actually say it like this. With Golos as the commander, you get access to your Bazaar of Baghdad for five colorless mana from the command zone. So you could definitely say that Bazaar of Baghdad is the commander for this deck. So we are basically gonna build our entire deck focused around these two cards. Anje and Bazaar of Baghdad are the engines of this deck. The cards are gonna make this deck flow beautifully. And we can fill our deck with cards that demand these cards without a problem because we have access to the color of green down there. That means that we can fill our deck with a really high amount of mana dogs that will help us reach the five mana to cast Basara Baghdad from our command zone. So I'm not afraid of having a really high amount of madness cards, flashback cards, other cards in general that demand access to Basara of Baghdad because I always have access to Basara of Baghdad. Unless there's an even mind sensor that prevents me from searching and finding this thing. But in the end, the deck kind of functions really well because we can consistently get access to this land or it's not that hard to actually tutor for this vampire and when you get these two in play, the deck just gets rock and rolling. So let's begin with talking about Bazaar of Baghdad and hand size. So what Bazaar of Baghdad is doing is letting you go through your deck really fast, but destroying your hand size in the process. So what we need to do here is build our deck a little bit adapted towards this, so we can rebuild our hand size or utilize our graveyard as if it were our hand. And then the best way of doing that is having flashback cards like Ancient Grudge, destroy target artifact, instant speed, two mana. But you can cast it from your graveyard by only one green mana. That's great. So basically, if you discard this using Basara Baghdad, you're not losing the card. You can use it later. The same thing about this thing, Obsessive Search. So this is the first madness card I'm gonna showcase for you. For one blue mana instant speed, draw a card. But madness, one blue mana, you can cast it for that mana instead. So tap this, cast this, draw a card, and you basically go draw two, discard three, draw one. You're going plus minus zero. We also have this spell, flashback from our graveyard, we have this land, Drowned Yard Temple. For three mana, you can return this from your graveyard back into play, a little bit rebuilding uh, power. 
We also have something I really recommend whenever you're actually playing Basara Baradan and have the access to Red, Squee Goblin Nabob, probably the best card in the entire game to rebuild hand size with Basara Baradan. Activate Basara Draft 2, discard 3 including this thing. At the beginning of your upkeep, return this back to your hand, rebuilding your hand size. And then you're sculpting your hand, discarding this for new cards, regaining this over and over, and this basically becomes draw 2, discard 2. Now we're not losing our hand size anymore. I want to showcase some more cards. We have Shadow of the Grave that is going to synergize greatly with Anje. We're going to get back to Anje later. Then we have Deep Analysis, Flashback, 2 mana, lose 3 life and draw 2 cards. That's great. We also have Genesis. Genesis is really similar to how Squee functions. The difference is that you don't have to pay mana to return Squee, but you have to pay 3 mana in your upkeep to act to get this thing triggered, to return target creature card from your graveyard back to your hand. It doesn't matter what creature card you return by this, because you're gonna sculpt your hand by discarding that creature, returning it again, transforming this into not losing your hand size anymore. But Genesis is actually uh, quite functional and good, because Genesis is rebuilding our plan A. If our opponents kill Anje, we can use Genesis to regain Anje from our graveyard back to our hand, and now we can keep on rock and rolling. One more card I would like to mention is this one. Let's begin with Dusk. 4 mana sorcery to destroy all creatures with power 3 or greater. Then we have this spell, Dawn, for 5 mana from our graveyard. It's like flashback, aftermath. Return all creature cards with power 2 or less from your graveyard to your hand. We're gonna talk about that later when we're talking about going through our entire deck with Anje and her madness. But this is also good because it can rebuild Anje. If Anje gets killed, which she's gonna get sometime sooner or later, you can cast this from your graveyard, regaining Anje, and then you can keep on rock and rolling again. Before we proceed forward and stop talking about Bazaar of Baghdad and start talking about Anje, I want to talk about this synergy. Iron Crag Pyromancer. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, this will deal 3 damage to any target. Remember, this is drawing 2 cards, so just by tapping this, you will get a trigger from this. And Anje is actually quite good at getting triggers from this one as well. I've actually been able to get three triggers from this on each turn cycle quite consistently playtesting this deck. So let's look a little bit more specifically at Anje and how the game flow and the gameplay could look like operating this deck. So let's say we have Anje in play, we have a bunch of mana, we're passing turn and then suddenly one of our opponents are doing something we don't want them to do or successfully get away with. So we tap Anje, discard this thing, circular logic, a blue madness card. Counter target spell unless its controller pays one for each card in your graveyard and we're gonna have a huge graveyard playing this deck. They can't pay uh, to stop this. Then we will draw a card and untap Anje and we will successfully cast this thing. Then we pass uh, priority, it keeps on going. Then in our last opponent's end step we tap Anje again, we discard this thing, a white madness card. I told you there were really good madness cards in other colors outside of red and black. Frantic purification, destroy target enchantment for only one white mana. Then we will untap Anje again and we will draw a new card. So we tap Anje again and we discard just the wind. One blue mana madness. Return target creature to its owner's hand. It's a small instant speed interaction. This is something you could cast to prevent an opponent from winning if they assemble a creature card combo. And then we will untap Anje, draw a new card, tap Anje and discard this thing. Riftstone Portal. As long as Riftstone Portal is in your graveyard, lands you control have tap for green and white. This is actually gonna make Bastar of Baghdad capable of tapping for mana. 
I made a video once that goes by the name CEDH Cantrip Control and what that video is trying to showcase is the problems with interaction that doesn't progress your board state or game plan whatsoever, while cantrips, cards that are interacting or doing something but drawing a card in the process will help you get through your deck and Anja is basically turning every madness card into a cantrip and even ongoingly as long as you have mana for them because you cannot sit there and tap her, discard these things, cast them, untap Anja and keep on going. And this is gonna make it possible for you to basically go through your entire deck, potentially even drawing your entire deck or let's say discarding your entire deck. And here comes the big question what is the ratio of madness? How mad should we build this stick? How mad should we make this stick? Because the more madness cards you actually have inside your deck, the better Anje will perform. But the more madness cards you have, the weaker deck you get. And sometimes the madness cards will actually take up a little bit too many slots and spots and it's hard for you to include other important cards. There are three cards that goes by the name Getaxian Probe, Mishra's Bubble and Ursa's Bubble that will basically shrink your deck size. They will transform your 99 into a 97, 96 or something of that sort. They are cantrips that you don't pay mana for. They will basically just be casted whatsoever and then just draw a new card and Anje with all of her madness is actually doing the exact same thing. If your deck contains let's say 20 cards with madness and you get Anje in play you will basically remove all of those madness cards in your deck because whenever you have them in your hand tap Anje, discard them, draw a new card tap Anja, discard another madness card and just shrink your deck size, fill your graveyard with fuel. So let's get back on the topic of madness rates you. Here we have a card that is a really good example, Dark Withering. Six black mana instant, destroy target non-black creature, that's utterly terrible. However, you can cast it for only one black mana, madness. However, if you don't have access to Bazaar of Baghdad or Anja, this card is basically a dead card inside your hand, or unless you have some other uh, discard effects. Another card or another card group we need to mention are these ones. Creatures with madness but no other ability whatsoever. Reckless Worm, a 4-4 trample and that's it. You can pay 5 mana for it, or you can pay 3 mana with madness for it. Now I truly recommend this card if you're building this deck as a 1v1 because you can tap this during an opponent's turn before blockers cast this in instant speed and then block with it. That's really good 1v1 but in a multiplayer free for all game a 4-4 is utterly terrible especially when people have a starting life total of 40. But there is a reason to actually include this thing because you can turn Anja into a one card combo. A combo where Anja is basically discarding your entire deck. That isn't perfectly consistent as you might think it is. It could actually fizzle because there isn't enough madness to assemble a EDH pure tribal superior insane Anje 100% consistent deck. It could still be quite consistent, there's a lot of fixing for you, there's a lot of cards that will rebuild your hand size, and eventually you could make Anje turn into a one card combo of some sort if you want that. But that would require that you play a tremendously high amount of dead cards when you don't have access to Anje. I actually prefer playing this deck with something about 20 to 24 cards with madness that I consider good cards in general. Well, let's put it like this. Good cards in general when you're casting them for their madness cost and that they are synergizing with Anje. But this is taking us to the next step of the video on how this deck is actually going to win. And I would like to say that this part is really open. You can actually build this deck in a lot of different variations of ways, depending on how many madness cards you want to have inside it, what sort of flashback costs, 
you want to have inside this deck and how you want to win. And there's a lot of potential win cons and combos you can go for. What we basically have constructed here is a deck that is filling your graveyard to a really high extent and drawing a lot of cards, synergizing with madness, flashback, and things like that. It's a I would say this is a control deck that is making and transforming a lot of cards into cantrip control, which is quite good. Now the first combo in mind should be something like Reanimator, bringing back this demon Rasakef from your graveyard into play and here you can start sacrificing creature cards to tutor for your real combo that you actually want to win with. Another combo that I think you could go for is something like Icy Concept Dramatic Reversal. This is actually something you could uh, tutor for with your demon because Golus can actually win with these two cards. Now, if you're including these cards, you might start considering this thing, Mirrodin Besieged. When you cast this and it comes into play, choose Phyrexian. At the beginning of your end step, draw a card, then discard a card. This is gonna synergize and do the exact same thing that this deck is trying to achieve all day long. And then, if there are 15 or more artifacts in your graveyard, target opponent lose the game. So this can sit there and kill a player per turn. We are definitely capable of putting a lot of cards into our graveyard, and if we have decided to go for this combo, Icy Concept of Dramatic Reversal, we're probably gonna include a high ratio of artifacts. One more thing though, is that if you actually go for Mirrored and Besieged, I don't think you can play a really high Madness Tribal, because you wanna have a really high artifact deck to make this functional. The next combo I would like to talk about is Glinton Bakune. Now this isn't really a combo, it's more of a synergy, and I don't think it's consistent enough to be called good enough. But the synergy is there and Glinton Bakunir is actually helping you discard things when you don't have access to these two. So when this thing attacks, you may pay two mana, discard a card, and then draw a card. And whenever you discard a card, it will deal one damage to all opponents. That means that when you have these two in play and you have a really high madness tribal deck, you can do some really insane amount of damage. Actually, this could become something of a one card combo. You put this into play, discard and draw cards until you get access to this thing, cast this thing, and then keep on going until all of your opponents are dead. I don't think it's consistent enough, but I think this card is good enough on its own for this deck. This is a card this deck wanna have, so you should consider it anyway. It's a good plan C win, a, a beatdown plan. Then we have something like this thing. Emrakul, the promised end. So we're drawing a really high amount of cards. We're filling our graveyard, and if we have a really high amount of different card types, we can reduce the casting cost of this thing down quite low, that we're able to cast it, steal one of our opponent's turn and use that player to win the game. This isn't consistent as if you failed, you target someone and you didn't predict that they were gonna win, you might just use their player's turn to disrupt the game in a chaotic way. In the end, I have actually won games by stealing opponent's win con and winning with infinite damage they are doing, but in the end, mostly when I'm casting this, I'm usually killing one player. And then I have a 13-13 flying to beat phase. So I don't think this is a good plan A. This is probably something of a plan B, plan C. But it's a card that actually doesn't require any cards to function. Because the deck in, on its own are already doing what Emrakul wants to be achieved. The last combo that I would like to showcase that I think is the best one is Hermit Druid. And the combo with Hermit Druid that I recommend, you don't have any basic land whatsoever, you put these cards into your graveyard and you have a Necrotic Ooze and a Naxaw Click. So what will happen from here is that you will cast Dread Return by sacrificing a bunch of creatures and this is a good example of a flashback card that this deck will like. Anger is giving all of your creatures haste. As long as you control a mountain, you will reanimate Necrotic Ooze from your graveyard back into play. You will activate this ability to tap Necrotic Ooze to untap a bunch of lands. And then you will untap the Ooze with the Anaxar Clicks ability. If you have, you will go gain infinite mana through this because this is netting free mana and this is losing two. 
So from here you will exile all of your opponent's libraries and then you will be able to cast your opponent's libraries. And then you basically just pass turn and they will die because their libraries are gone. The big reason why I think Hermit Druid is a great combo for this deck is because you can basically draw into these combo pieces and discard them where you want them to be in your graveyard that is and then simply cast Necrotic Ooze for its mana cost. You aren't always able to win the game with Hermit Druid but these two cards could walk the distance. Also I would like to mention that Cross and Restorer isn't that terrible as it becomes a secondary Bazaar of Baghdad when, once you have Bazaar of Baghdad in play. And also, you can quite easily achieve Threshold with this deck. I think Golus actually deserves a little bit of a mention inside this deck. He's just not here for color identity and tutoring for Bazaar of Baghdad. That's the two main reasons. His activated ability is something I only use when I have nothing better to do. Normally this deck plays out so well that you don't actually need his activated ability. You only see me use it when I'm out of other options. But his ETB effect of finding lands could actually find some other juicy lands. Now here is one example of Barbarian Ring, a land with interaction. If you have Threshold, you can sacrifice this to deal 2 damage to a creature or player. Or Cabal Pit, close to the same thing. I'm actually not tutoring for these two lands, but they are good in a deck that is filling your graveyard. This is a card, a land, that will make Bazaar of Baghdad actually tap for black mana and that's actually quite nice sometimes. Here is a good card that will give Hermit Druid haste and why Golos is a great commander for a Hermit Druid deck. But this is actually the land that I'm usually finding with my Golos once I've already had Bazaar of Baghdad in play and they've killed Golos. They usually do that because they are so, for some reason afraid of it, which they shouldn't be. Golos is basically just there to find Bazaar Bad Eye and then I, I want it to die because then I can grab this. Field of the Dead. This is basically a Plan C wing con. It's, it's cute. I don't have any basic land in this deck whatsoever. So when Field of the Dead enters or another land you enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands with different names, create a 2 2 black zombie creature token. In the end, because this deck can be built in a lot of different variations of ways, I've decided to share two lists in the description below of this video. First list is a complete deck list of the current Golos, Hermit Druid and even Emrakul that I'm currently playing the most. My, my favorite take on it. But I'm also sharing a deck list or actually a, a, a card list of all the potential IDs, cards, wing cons and other things you could consider and include. Cards that I'm not playing but cards that you might consider and play depending on how you would like to build this deck. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you want to support me, consider sharing my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link down below will also help the channel grow. So a big thank you to all of you.